It's the summer of 2021. Do you know where your movies are? They're back in the theaters. And so are standalone and fully edited reviews on this channel. What's going on, y'all? We are the Cine Fanatics. Welcome to our channel. My name is Robert Adams. I am Chris Adams. And we are here with a full-on, spoiler-free review for In the Heights. This movie was supposed to come out last summer, and it hasn't. It's coming out this summer. It's out now. We got an early screening. We're going to give you a review for it. Now, right off the bat, I'm going to tell you our personal connection to this movie. Well, I mean... We're in Texas, so we we haven't been we don't live in New York. We haven't been to Washington Heights, and obviously, we're not Dominican. So this is gonna be a little interesting. Yeah, we're very white. <laughs> I mean, it happens. I mean, I, I don't. Know. It's just the way we came out. Anyway, so if you're not familiar with In the Heights, quick rundown. This started as a Broadway play, actually before Broadway. It, it had a showing. You know, off, off Broadway, Broadway did all that, all that kind of showings. Uh, basically, started in 2005 from Lin Manuel Miranda, who you might know from the phenomenon that is Hamilton. He did that Hamilton one. He did that Hamilton he one. He did Hamilton. He knows his way around a Broadway stage. Oh, he might. So this had a lot of like really good showings on the on the Broadway scene. It really took off on Broadway probably around the 2009, 2008, 2009 time. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's where I think you really start getting eyes on this show. It is it, it it's it's one of those shows that's like it's destined to be in a movie at some point. Which is great because like outside of doing a little bit of the history research and everything, neither one of us really knew anything about In the Heights going into this movie. <laughs> we're like, we like musicals. Again, we like Lynn manuel Miranda. Sold. It's true. <laughs> uh, I mean, again, we, we live in Texas. We don't live in New York, so we don't get the opportunity to go see like Broadway shows all the time, and nor do we ever have the cash fundage to catch them while they're touring around the country anyway. So... Hop on our Patreon. Join the Patreon tiers, the one that's right for you. Help us get to those New York dreams. You were talking about this movie, though? Yeah, this, right off the bat, we're talking about musicals, which we both have opinions about musicals. Generally, we both like them. Uh, it also depends on the kind of musical. If you know our channel, you know me, you know La La Land is pretty much my favorite movie. Shut up. And I'm super on board with any kind of musical that does those big, giant, fun set pieces, dancing in the streets, all that kind of stuff, and then one that hits home on a more personal story. This movie definitely did that. It hit that same note, that same chord that I loved from La La Land, which is the follow your dreams, chase after your dreams. It did it, obviously, in a different way, but still enough that I was like, man, I love this. I'm inspired by this. I want to go home and chase all of my dreams right now. <laughs> well, go to bed first, get some good sleep, and then wake up and chase them the next sleep day. Sleep is for the week. week. Yeah, apparently. Uh, me, my personal connection to musicals, I just, I'm I'm a person that enjoys a good, hearty sing-along with a movie. I mean, I just, yeah, I, I like belting out the tunes while they're dancing and performing and flourishing on the You've screen. Got a couple of dance moves yourself you have to kick out there. Yeah, I haven't drank enough. <laughs> Tonight. <laughs> Ever. Um, well... <laughs> but yeah I mean you bring up the music the music in this movie is amazing mm -hmm. it's so good it is it's 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 great because it's the type of music that tells the story yeah uh, there, there are those musicals out there where pretty much the entire thing is just music I mean you look at like Les Mis that whole thing is just music obviously I like it where they interject a little dialogue you kind of get some of the in between parts with the story and this movie definitely has that because mm -hmm. I, I don't think that's the way the musical was actually built but what I love is that the songs are the set pieces that push the story forward in this movie. Yeah. Uh, my comparison with it is, say, like Hamilton. I was not a huge fan of the Hamilton musical. Get out. It, it, yeah, I know. I know. I know. Give me, give me a chance to explain. I, 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 can, I can back this up. Uh, the reason is, is because, for me, a lot of the story of Hamilton was told within those songs. C compare that to uh, I don't know. Let's let's go something simple like a Disney musical, uh, Little Mermaid. The they were sitting there. Sebastian is trying to tell Ariel that life is better under the sea. He tells her that, 
and then expands upon it by singing a song. You didn't need the song to convince you what the story of the movie was. Yeah. So if you are understanding my connection there, Hamilton, you have to be able to listen to the dialogue in the, in the music to be able to understand what's happening with the story. Yeah. This movie did not do that. This movie, uh, it, it had enough to really expand upon the feelings and emotions going on, but it wasn't, the music and the words were not there necessary to tell the story. Yeah. That's the kind of musical I really like. Yeah. And the the greatest thing about all of this is also the way the actors did their part in pursuing uh, pursuing and pushing forward this this whole story. I mean, you're looking at Lin-Manuel Miranda and his his usual crew are kind of in this. I mean, Anthony Ramos pops up. Uh, we have a, a he pops up. He's the lead guy. Yeah, he does. Pop, he pops up. In he the, pops up throughout the whole movie. Literally the whole movie. The other person who pops up is a cameo by oh, a certain George Washington. That's mm-hmm. a fun. That's a fun little bit in this film. Yeah, but it's the fact that. Anthony Ramos is just, he knows exactly what to do. He's got a life on Broadway already. And coming into this movie, he has star power. He has such star power taking over that main central role as Usnavi and just giving us, like, just a wonderful, wonderful performance. I love the history of his name. Yeah, yeah. That was so good. <laughs> the cover of that movie is, is hilarious. On top of that, the connection between Usnavi and Vanessa, that's uh, Melissa Barrera, fantastic. I love the chemistry that was there between them that built over the course of the film. And not only them, but the chemistry that also built between Nina and Benny, which is Corey Hawkins and Leslie Grace. I mean, that was... All four of these characters really, really uh, did their part to uh, sell the different aspects that we saw of Washington Heights and their own individual like character arcs, what their dreams were, where they were going. Uh, the standout of those, of course, was uh, Nina and her, you know, her pursuit of school. She left Washington Heights. Mm-hmm. She she got out of the out of the out of the uh, the block, and she was going and pursuing something more that everybody else, you know, even her father was like just dreaming about. Yeah, her father I really like too because wasn't her father was like Jimmy Smith? Jimmy Smith. I mean, he popped up on the screen. I didn't know he was in this movie. He popped up on the screen. I'm like, he's in this movie? Oh, and he's going to sing? Like, I didn't know that. Uh, so I loved him in this movie. I thought his character very well done. Uh, the other one I wanted to point out that I really liked was Daphne Rubin Vega. Uh, she was the owner of the salon in this movie. I liked her, and when I saw her, that's what really helped me like shape my opinion of this movie. I'm a huge fan of Rent. Yes, I'm I'm, I'm a self admitting I'm a I'm a Rent head. Take me, baby, holy me. Uh, I do like Rent. Yeah, she was the original Mimi Marquez in the original Broadway version of Rent. Um, so like she's already got this experience playing on Broadway, playing these roles, playing that kind of a character. Cause I don't think there was that much of a stretch between her character as like Mimi from Rent and then her character in this movie was, uh, Daniela. Like there, there really wasn't that much of a gap I would say between them. Mm-hmm. Uh, and she played it very well and I loved her role in that. Talking about other people that I have to highlight who also originated kind of roles and stuff on Broadway, mm-hmm. you've got to highlight Olga Merides as Claudia, as Abuela Claudia. Abuela. Abuela. She is the grandmother. Grandmother of pretty much the entire block in Washington Heights. That's right. We live in Texas. We know some Spanish, y'all. This has been Speaking Spanish with the Cine Fanatics. Either way, Got to highlight her because she was a big standout performance. She So she did come from performing as the character on Broadway. I believe she got a Tony for it. Mm-hmm. So that is a huge, huge deal. And to have her be able to translate that character from the stage to the screen. I mean, she was honestly like, I would say she was like the heart of the movie. She was at least a big piece of the heart of the movie. Yeah, because everyone went to like her house. It's where... yeah. Everyone was her family. Yeah. Even though, if I remember correctly, I don't think anyone in this movie is actually related Nobody to her. Nobody was related to her. Yeah, yeah. She was just, yeah, she was just the abuela of, of the heights. Mm-hmm. So uh, The other thing we got to highlight and talk about here, though, is the director, John Chu. John M. Chu. John M. Chu. John M. Chu. You got to remember that M. Not to be confused with John L. Chu or John K. Chu or... 
Fair enough. He's someone who's come from a wide range in his career. G.I. Joe movies. Step Up. Step Up. Which makes actually makes sense. Dancing, it, it works. Oh, okay, that one. Yeah, Jim and the Holograms. Or I guess there's music involved in there. But also did Crazy Rich Asians. Yeah. Uh, which, so that's the thing. Like, it seems like now he's hit that path where he may take like uh, some culture based in some ethnicity and just really expand upon that and show everyone what makes up that culture, that ethnicity, what makes it so awesome. Crazy Rich Asians was a fantastic movie. This one was good. Um, and then I think he's even like, if I remember correctly, as of like February this year, he's signed on to direct uh, Wicked. Hope Ooh. that actually happens. Not that that's a culture or ethnicity. That's just... Uh, people from Oz. But, I mean, it's it, it's an attempt to do another storytelling of The Wizard of Oz, or yeah. at least The Wicked Witch of the West. I love The Wicked musical. So. so, the way I take this is, as a director, he's somebody who definitely did what, you know, some would assume you have to do at the beginning to get your career started, but now it really seems like he's on the path to creating movies he wants to create, to tell stories that he wants to tell. And you can see that passion come through. Mm -hmm. Not only because he's done those step-up movies and that comes through in how the movie itself was choreographed and a lot of the dance routines and stuff that happened in this film, which were fantastic, but also the fact that you can really just, you can see that passion, that, that love for this story uh, just come through in every frame, every inch of of the movie on the screen. It's just, it, it was just well shot, just well directed, everything about it. Uh, I think it's fair to say, really like this movie. Do we have something negative to say about this movie? Um, my takeaway from it again, uh, this is going to be no, we don't. Yeah, <laughs> this is going to be completely again my connection with musicals. Um. <laughs> Maybe I would have benefited a little bit more had I listened to the soundtrack before going in. I don't necessarily like to do that. No. Uh, there's some movies I go in and I immediately can pick up on the music. I'm tapping my foot and everything. Um, some of them not. Just because I'm not doesn't mean it's a bad musical. Yeah. Uh, this movie, I was not tapping my feet along, but there was, it, it definitely had some good songs to it. It's just something I'm going to need to go back and listen to again, and then eventually I will watch this movie again. Uh, it wasn't disappointing at all. It's just it didn't catch with me right off the bat, and it does require a second viewing and probably a couple of soundtrack listenings, which, I mean, <laughs> wow, that's a real sacrifice there. Just I'm going to listen to the soundtrack. As a note... <laughs> It's really hard to tap your foot when you're, like, kicked back in a uh, lounge movie seat. You could still, like... Regardless, uh, <laughs> yeah, there's just not a whole lot negative to say about this, honestly. It was like, just a beautiful story, a very vibrant colored movie. Yes. This this movie played right into my uh, my editor like cinematographer Ooh, type of look. Of, pretty. I want to crank up the saturation. It's like, pretty. The, it fed right into that and scratched that itch very well. Yeah, <laughs> it's just... It's just a gorgeous film, both in its appearance and the heart behind it. Yeah. Uh, if you love musicals, if you love movies, honestly, we can go back to theaters now. If you love movies, please, I beg you, go see this movie and go see it in a theater. I know this movie is going to be playing day and date with uh, HBO Max. That's your but, second or third viewing. But, yeah, if you have the opportunity, go see it in the theater. Music, surround, surround sound, surround. just uh, on the big screen. It's gorgeous. It, it looks good. Go do it. Yeah. We're not sponsored by any theater chain yet. Um, this is completely our opinion. It's going to look and sound so much better in a theater. Go see it in a theater as long as you feel okay doing that. Now, that being said, I will be replaying it on loop probably this weekend on HBO Max over and over and over again. Oh, yeah, probably. Because it'll be available. So, uh, ranking. Where do we rank this? Out of 10? Mm, I'd give this a solid 9.5, fam. 9.5? I love this movie. <laughs> Yes. Um, I'm going to go. I will probably give it a good, as of right now, seven and a half. Negative Nancy. 
I, again, I like that's just off of one viewing. I'm going to need a little bit more time with it. Uh, best example uh, might sound a little weird, but uh, I wasn't a huge fan of uh, The Greatest Showman either when we first saw that. After listening to the soundtrack and then watching the movie again, love that movie a lot more. Granted, I know the controversy. Okay. I'm not talking about the controversy of it. Just that aside. I'll give you that I didn't like La La Land the first time I saw it, and then I thought about it, and then I saw it again, and it became my favorite movie. See, good example. I didn't like La La Land when I first saw it. I still don't like La La Land. I don't you know still why haven't I brought, seen it I again. I don't know why I brought that up as an example. You still haven't seen it again. Anyway, guys, that's going to be our review for In the Heights, the crazy cluster mess that it was. Cluster mess. Cluster mess. You know, you got to love it. If you love anything that you saw here, or even if you largely... We're okay with it and liked some of it. You don't have to dislike it. Either way, feel free to subscribe. As long as you're just okay with it, that's all we ask. If you're just mildly okay with it, hit that subscribe button. We would greatly appreciate that. The like also helps too. Yeah. Also, make sure you follow us on all the socials. We are at Cinefanatics MLP. You can find me, Robert Adams MLP, him, Chris Adams MLP, on yeah. Twitter, Instagram, and Letterbox. Ooh. All those places you can find us there. Uh, also, again, like I mentioned earlier, hop on our Patreon, patreon.com slash cinefanatics. we got great things happening at that site. Go hop on the tier, help support us, help us create more fun-loving content that hopefully you're at least maybe just okay with. Maybe. Anyways. At least. Yeah. That's all we could ask for. That's the jumping point. Again, like he said, make sure you like this video. Comment down below. What did you think of this movie? What did you think of this review? Let us know down below. Make sure you share this with your friends who want to know people's opinions of In the Heights. Just let them share. <laughs> share. Like, everyone find out about this and l l let people know your opinion. I think they got it. Cool. Also, come back Tuesday nights, 9.30 p.m. Central Time for the tagline. That is our flagship show where we talk about movie news. So we will probably be talking a little bit more about In the Heights on Tuesday, possibly, maybe. Come back for that show. It's going to be a lot of fun. Otherwise, all the other YouTube things you could do, like subscribe. Hit the subscribe button. There's one that's right here down below us. And there's also one that's up here above our heads. Over here off to the side are a couple other videos that we have made. And as always... What would you do with $96,000? Get over my awkwardness about ending YouTube videos. Fair. I'm pretty sure I can do something like that with that amount of money. Bye.